G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Construct 2 tutorial for Super Mario Bros video number 12 we're up to. And this time around we're going to get the camera working. We're going to get Mario being able to move around the level and the camera follow him just as good. Now, let me quickly explain to you how the camera would work in Construct 2 in a normal project. Pretty much what you would do is you would add a behavior, you would add what's called the scroll to behavior, and what this does is it always looks at Mario and no matter where he goes, left, right, up or down, the camera is going to try and follow him as much as we can. But we're not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because Mario's camera works a little bit different to that. The way it works is when Mario is on the left hand side of the screen, the camera doesn't move. It doesn't follow him. As soon as Mario gets into about the middle of the screen and keeps going, the camera starts following him. Okay, so from this point, the, Mar the, the camera would start following Mario across the level and then the camera would be here when he stops. And if Mario goes back, the camera doesn't move. The camera stays at this position. Like the furthest position Mario's gone, that's where the camera sticks to. Okay? Now, obviously, you do not have to follow this prerequisite. In fact, if you don't like that idea, if you want to be able to travel back through your level, I would suggest just add the scroll to behavior to Mario and you're pretty much done with this video. There's one more thing we're going to do, though. The second thing we're going to do this video is when Mario tries to go back left through the level, he's actually going to get stuck. He's going to stop on the left hand side of the screen. And he's not going to be able to travel any further. This was actually a limitation of the hardware of the NES, but I'm trying to be faithful to the original Mario here, so I'm going to include that functionality. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have an object that sits here on the left hand side of the level, and as the camera moves along the level, so if the camera's here, you have to imagine an invisible wall is about here and Mario is still not going to be able to pass through the edge of the screen. Okay, So basically we're going to include that functionality as well in this video. Again, if you don't like that idea and you want Mario to be able to go through the level to the left, feel free to skip this entire video. Okay, Sounds dumb and you'll just have to wait until next week and we're going to get into the graphics for the levels. But for right now, let's start the camera because I've talked enough. I want you to right click on the MISC folder here insert a new object and it's going to be a sprite called camera nice and simple just add it roughly in the middle there we're going to set its size to begin with to 16 by 16 because that's what every object in Mario is then we're going to fill up this guy with a black color so filler set it to black fill him up and we're good so there's our camera so the two behaviors we need on this guy or the not the two behaviors the two settings but one of them is a behavior First one, we're going to put scroll to on this guy. So the camera or the, the view of our game is always going to be following the camera sprite. Okay, so it's not going to give a crap about Mario. As this camera sprite moves along the level, our view is going to move with it. Okay, and then what we're going to do is set its initial visibility to invisible. That way, we're going to, it's going to follow the camera sprite, but we're not going to see it. Okay, it's just going to look like we're following Mario technically. The second thing that we need to do is we need to change the position so it's smack bang in the middle of our level, or our view, I should say. And if you have a look at your window size, 256, half of that is 128. Okay, height, 224, half of that is 122. So 128, and then 112. I said 122, didn't I? So it's 112. Okay, so that's smack bang in the middle of our view. All right, and now we just need to code this guy so that when Mario tries to overlap him, so Mario's going to be on this side of it. This guy's going to try and catch up. Okay, undo. How are we going to track that easily by the X value? So if Mario's X value is 134, it's bigger than 128. So we simply move the camera to where Mario is just on the X axis, not on the Y axis, just the X. So to do this, let's add a new group in the Mario sheet. Camera. Okay, controls the camera movement and the left invisible wall. Okay, I know that's got a few extra functions and it's just called camera, but I think they're slightly related. So let's add a sub event to check if Mario has overlapped the camera. So Mario, compare X if it's greater than Mario, oh sorry, Mario's X is greater than the camera X, then we need to move the camera. So action is camera. Set position. We're not going to do this one. We're going to do just a regular set position. I'll tell you why in a second. So the new X coordinate is Mario's X. Because we're going to pick, we're just picking Mario's X because it's the largest X value. 
the Y value is actually going to be the camera.y. So the camera is not going to follow Mario up and down. It's going to stay in the same height, and it's just going to follow Mario to the right and nowhere else. So notice how we're not doing a less than. It's only going to follow Mario to the right. So if we play our game, okay, when I hit the middle of the screen, it's going to start following. But when I go back left, it's not going to follow. So we keep on going. And it's a really smooth camera. I love the way it works, in fact. Now, the problem is I can leave the level and come back if I feel like it. So that's what we're going to implement the invisible wall. Okay. Again, you could just add a scroll to to this guy and make him follow Mario left and right. It's entirely up to you. But let's implement our wall. So I'm going to right-click on MISC and insert another sprite. Call it wall. There's only a few little things we're going to do to this guy. I'm going to put him over here. I'm going to make him black again because... Black's a good color for things you don't want to see. And I'm actually just going to change the origin point of this guy. I'm actually going to set the origin point on the far right-hand side. And I'm just going to type it in here for 250. And that's it there. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to check the X position of this wall and Mario's X position. So if the origin is here, it's easy to check this line against the middle plus the, half the width and blah 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 Okay. So with that done, position your wall so he's not on the level, but he's bloody close. I'm probably just going to do it sort of there. Okay, you can see there's a bit of a gap, but that's okay. Make sure it covers a fair chunk of the up and down, because you don't want them leaving the level by jumping over the top of it or falling through it. Okay, so that there's done. He's called wall. The only behavior we're going to add to this guy is pin. And what this is going to do, he's going, we're going to stick him to the camera. So as the camera moves, our invisible wall moves, and it's all good. Now, what you need to make sure for these two objects, by the way, that they're on the level layer. Don't Make sure they're not on the HUD layer. Otherwise, it's going to screw everything up. Next thing, let's add some code to this guy again. We're going to, first of all, pin the wall so it follows the camera. And this is really easy to do. The event is start of layout. Okay, the action is really simple. We're going to, the wall is going to pin to the camera, just like that. The mode is just position only. Okay, so wall pin to the camera, position only. So as the camera moves to the right, the wall is going to move to the right as well. But because it's outside the layout, it's not actually going to be visible ever. Okay, it's going to be just outside the layout for us. Okay. So if I play that now, you're not going to see anything because it's outside the layout. And secondly, it's not going to do anything because it hasn't got solid or anything like that on it. Now, I was originally going to use the solid behavior. But the problem was, if I did put solid on the wall, it meant that Goombas, Coom uh, our Koopa Troopers, and Koopa Shells would actually hit the wall and never be able to leave the left-hand side of the screen, which is not good. You want to be able to walk off the screen. Okay. So we're going to add a new sub-event to make sure that Mario is the only one that can't pass through this wall. And to be honest, I don't like this code a whole lot. It's a bit dodgy, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But let's add a sub-event to the camera. We're going to check if Mario's overlapping the wall. So we're going to go Mario. We're going to go overlapping and an offset. And I'll explain why in a second. The object is the wall. The offset X is minus 1. And the reason I do that is because I want to check one pixel to the left of where Mario is currently. Okay? So basically from that, Okay, I can. I then need to check if Mario's moving to the left because if I just say Mario's hitting the wall, put him back in the position, he's never going to be able to move anywhere. But that's a pretty simple process. All we're going to do is add another condition, which is to check if Mario's vector x is less than zero. So we're going to go system compare two values for this one. So we can have a look at Mario platform vector x less than zero, which indicates that he's moving to the left. Okay. So from that, we're going to stop Mario moving. So add action, Mario, set vector x to 0. So if he's moving to the left and he's hitting the wall, stop him moving. I thought this would be enough, to be honest, but unfortunately, Construct put my cog in my works, and there's a little problem. So we can hit the wall, and we can't move any further. But watch this. If I hold left, I can squeeze myself into the wall, which is annoying as hell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check... Well, sorry, we're not going to check anything. We're actually going to tell Mario, go back to where you were. So, Mario, set x to the wall.x. However, this isn't a perfect solution either, because the wall's x position is 
in line with the origin point. So it's on that edge. But Mario's origin point is in the middle of Mario. So when you move Mario's X to the wall X, Mario's halfly stuck in the wall. So we need to minus half of Mario's width. Mario dot width divided by 2. So set into the X of the wall and then minus half of Mario's width. This is the dodgy part. I don't like the look of this, unfortunately. But if you play it, you'll see he bounces around a little, but he can't go through the wall. And when I move along, that invisible wall moves with me. And this is pretty much exactly how the original Mario operates. So again, if you don't like it, you don't have to include the invisible wall. But I've tried to code it because that's what I wanted to do. All right, so that's it for today, everybody. Now, if you want to like, subscribe, and comment down the bottom, I'd love to hear from you. But next video, we're going to get into creating our level graphics, and we'll hopefully do that early next week. Sorry about the late one, this one. But until then, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.